My golden child siblings received $370,000 from our parents, while I got nothing. They still make fun of my modest, self-funded wedding, though. At the family supper, I lost it. I am a 27-year-old man who has three siblings. I felt like an afterthought my entire life. My parents have always given the finest to my 33-year-old female Lori, my 29-year-old male Chuck, and my 25-year-old female Jade. With luck, I get the leftovers. My siblings haven't given me a birthday present in almost a decade, but they still ask me to help out with group gifts for all of them each year. We were having a family meal on Friday night, and it felt like my siblings were making fun of me or bragging about something they had gotten from my parents that I was not allowed to have every other phrase. They were complimentary about practically every one of our weddings, but they also made sure to point out that my wife and I were happy with our modest, low-key wedding. But they ignored the fact that my parents paid for my brother's wedding but not mine, citing financial constraints related to saving for Jade's nuptials. They mentioned how little student debt they had since my parents had supported them, all of them attended pricey four-year universities and lived on campus. I originally attended a very prestigious and difficult to get into watchmaking school while living at home. I paid my rent at home as I was paid to go to school. Me folks bought me tools, and I sincerely appreciate their assistance. They gave me $7,000 for equipment, but they paid my siblings $121.50k a piece, so to them, it's equal. I didn't ask for money when I returned to school on my own, and I wasn't given any either. They took care of everything without my brother even having to ask when he returned to school. Numerous other insignificant remarks concerning automobiles and other lifestyle options were made. However, my brother and his wife's comment that their marriage is so wonderful because they go on impromptu dates, like the one they had the previous Friday night, is what really got me to crack. My wife and I had dinner at our house on Friday night after my parents abruptly called to cancel our plan since they had to watch Chuck's kids due to an emergency. As it happens, Chuck and my sister-in-law were having supper at Texas Roadhouse when the situation occurred. My mom's favorite dish is my grandpa's zeti and meatballs with homemade marinara, which I had spent hours creating. More than anything, I wanted to yell at them, but instead I stood up and walked away, leaving my wife in my wake. I gave my mom a detailed explanation of my departure when she called me later. I gave an explanation of the unfairness, the partiality, and the lack of concern they seemed to have for me. She didn't say much, and at the time I wasn't really searching for an apology or an explanation. It just seemed so obvious to me. I would clarify it if she truly wasn't able to see it. My mom is unhappy that I am injured, and Chuck and Lori are upset with me for ruining dinner, so it appears that at least some of what I said was heard by my siblings. I'm immature, they say, to be keeping score. Remarks, NTA, your siblings are also keeping tabs on the score. Every time they see you, they utilize that score to make fun of you. That was made possible by your parents, especially your mom who is suddenly upset that you were harmed. The only reason your mother is unhappy is that you have finally called them all out and stood up for yourself. Continue to keep score, I'm sure they will. Op, to be completely honest, didn't appear upset at all over the phone. But she just kind of lost it as I started to explain everything. She must have grown very quiet and said very little. I'm not sure whether this is the best course of action, but if I were you, NTA, I would put everything in writing exactly as you instructed, email it to every member of my family in a group chat, and then ban them. I would let go of our bond and continue to love them even though I was far away. Side note, do all of your siblings and you have the same appearance? OP, no, because Jade is adopted. But she's been treated like the baby and has always been one. I had a lot more background in my first draft, but it was far longer than the allotted character count. I bear a striking resemblance to my father's granddad. I even had the same issue with my eyes, they were blue at birth, but as I grew older, a brown ring appeared around the outside. If that's what you're getting at, then there's very little chance that I'm not my father's son. Jade, incidentally, is quite upset about the wedding and is on my side. However, it wasn't until almost half a year ago, six months after her own wedding, that she learned that they weren't covering the cost of my wedding. Because it had always been the verbal agreement, she believed that they had paid for a portion of my house or something. However, 
My parents never followed through on the long-standing arrangement that stated, we have money saved for each of you and you can either use it for a wedding or anything else you want as a wedding gift when you get married. I had to pay for my own wedding. Jade is not to blame for this. None of this was asked for by her. My mom and Lori planned the wedding, so she didn't even get to plan it herself. This is why it was extravagant. Lori and mom wanted it to be a lavish affair. When Jade and her husband are in town, we typically spend time together, this has been our routine for a while. Two, I suppose, make up for her early childhood sucking, family provides her things she doesn't ask for, frequently at my expense. But ever since she was around six, she would always give it back to me. She shouldn't have been in charge of enforcing the fairness of the grown-ups in our lives, Jade and I are okay. As you informed us, did you honestly share all of this knowledge with your family, or have you been holding it all inside yourself? I'm happy Jade, your sibling, is understanding of you. Op, I never disclosed more than one event at a time to anyone until that Friday night phone call with my mom. Because I was able to discuss every incident in detail for the first time without being stopped, it's also the most comprehensive I've ever been. We spoke for one on the phone. I was talking for the majority of the five hours. You seem like a strong emotional person, commenter. Even when they know they can't get through to you, sometimes individuals still manage to attempt. It provides further information about them. Would you even hang out with these individuals if you weren't related? You know, you do get to pick your family. Sail your own, don't worry about upsetting the boat. Op, I still spend a lot of time with my grandparents and Jade and her hubby. Since I was a young child, my pop pop, mom's dad, has spent more time with me than any other grandchild, and my dad's mom already sees me more often than anyone else in my immediate family. If he had been born today, he most likely would have received a diagnosis, as I do. Since we have similar sensory concerns and require time away from crowds, we have always withdrawn from family get-togethers to play boxy. First update, I'm not sure where to put all of this, so if it's acceptable, I'm putting it here. Some of this information was in my first draft, but I had to make a lot of edits to fit it within the allotted characters. While some of this has already been mentioned in other comments, I'm just compiling it here in the hopes that it will be viewed and provide answers. I have no reason to doubt that I am a child of my father. It is not worth revisiting the long list of genetic coincidences that would be required for that to be the case. Nor does he have any male relatives who could provide an explanation. My aunt is his only sibling, none of his cousins have ever been involved in his life or even close by. I always have the exact same appearance as my paternal grandfather. Although he passed away when my father was still a young man, he was a good father and is well remembered. Many, if not most, of the items my parents decided not to give to me have gone to my younger sister. However, she did not request any of it, and she has been among the few who has persistently attempted to put things right. For crying out loud, at six years old, she was attempting to make it right. She has undoubtedly not seen everything, but she has made an effort to rectify what she has. She may have a tendency to take people at face value and avoid raising concerns, but she is not callous. And nothing will change if you become upset with her. After I shared this, we spoke for a while, and she informed me she had been helping to buy me a birthday present every year since at least 2018. She handed my older sister money so that my wife and I could attend a soccer match featuring my favorite team. And then, when my wife and I inexorably wrote about attending games, she figured that one of the games we attended annually was the present she had been making financial contributions for. Although there is a lot of background there, the main point is that Jade and I get along well and she doesn't take part in unfairly singling me out. My wife and I get to spend a lot of time with her and her husband, generally just the four of us. Growing up, my maternal grandfather was undoubtedly partial to me, but it wasn't like I received things in plenty or anything. Our personalities are just so similar, and it was evident even when we were very young. Since I am on the spectrum, I have a strong suspicion that he was also given a diagnosis. Although we both have severe sensory issues, huge crowds and being surrounded by a multitude of different noise sources, perhaps his noisy Italian family, overwhelm us both. That's why we both hide for at least part of every family event. As time went on, 
we began to hide from each other by just going outside to play bokeh or isolating ourselves in the kitchen to cook. He's grown up and made remarks that suggest he feels like I'm not getting as much. And he has undoubtedly given me more stuff than anyone else over the past two to three years. Items that he expressly wants me to have and enjoy now, as well as when he passes away. That was undoubtedly the cause of the conflict on Friday. My elder siblings are accusing me of attempting to use my inheritance to further my own financial gain, and he is a very wealthy man. I have never asked and I have no idea what his plans are. He's always had a neurotic urge to make things even, and that's none of my concern. At Christmas, everyone receives the same number of boxes, precisely, if not exactly, from Santa. I don't think he will handle his estate any differently because of the amount of money given to each recipient. Sincerely, I anticipate that everything that isn't donated to charity will be split equally, but I genuinely believe that everything will be donated. On the other hand, I only see a lovely collection of music that I get to listen to on repeat, while my older siblings perceive the monetary value of his record collection and regard it as a financial bonanza. Never would I sell that. They believe that I'm hoarding the vintage timepieces he gave me, the most priceless of which is a timepiece with a 60-second Marlin. Once more, though, all they want is for me to sell them and split the money. To begin with, their only value is sentimental. Second of all, Pop Pop, who is still very much alive, only gave them to me because he knew I would wear and repair the ones I liked. It would be incredibly impolite and entitled to sell them. They are upset because he handed me his first fancy car, even though it is now worthless. It's not antique, uncommon, or coveted enough to be a collector's item, but it's still a dependable car. However, it holds sentimental value for me. It's in great exterior shape, but it's required a lot of effort to keep it running smoothly for years, it was his Sunday car. My elder siblings argue that I am actually the favorite and that the quantifiable and lavish money presents my parents gave them are insignificant compared to their, in my perspective, exaggerated assessment of the gifts my grandfather gave me. As I've gotten older, my paternal grandmother has been publicly favoring me more and more. Once more, this has nothing to do with money, and she isn't in a position to leave me an inheritance, as far as I know. Not that I would even put it to her. When I was little, I used to spend hours staring at an ancient clock of hers that was handcrafted by a local clockmaker and kept in a handmade cabinet. I didn't ask for her to put various labels inside of it stating that it belonged to her when I was as young as five or six years old. When the time comes, I will gladly accept it if she continues to feel that way. I appreciate it. However, I don't use our time together as a cover for some kind of time-stealing scheme. All I prefer to do is hang around by myself. She is a really humorous woman who enjoys going for walks with my spouse and our dogs. On holidays, instead of living in the guest house my parents had built for her, she stays with us in our home. My siblings believe she has provided me with financial assistance in some way. Again, she is most definitely not in the position to do this, barring any unforeseen circumstances. Sometime during the next week, my wife and I will have a conversation with my parents. We'll be taking our time to prepare by writing things down, but I'm not sure what to anticipate. I'm not even sure what I'm hoping to get out of it, but I'll be talking about family therapy. Update. Following advice from multiple people, my wife and I had a conversation with my parents around a week or so after the post. I put my ideas down on paper and, to the best of my understanding, created a comprehensive list and accounting of the differences between what I was given and what my siblings received over the years. I finally took the time to sit down and calculate my rent during my time at the Technicum, and I discovered that I had paid them more than they had ever paid for my tools. However, the total amount that my parents personally donated to my siblings, and never gave to me, was ultimately calculated to be between $370,000 on the high end and a negative $190,000 on the low end. During this whole situation, I think my angst was greatest when I sat down and saw the entire amount written out in that manner. My dad later acknowledged that my calculations were probably modest after we got down and talked over each significant gift incident case by case. Although my parents were aware of the disparities, they strongly pushed back on the exact amounts. That was pretty much the end of any fruitful conversation for that evening. My dad simply stated that they didn't think it had gotten that severe, 
but he wouldn't elaborate on how they would have missed the warning signs in the interim. Chuck and Lori kept getting more and more irrational, calling and texting my parents, my extended family, and myself. Since then, I haven't had a direct conversation with either of them, and I don't plan to anytime soon. About a week following that initial meeting, my parents requested another meeting. There was a lot of talk, but basically, they thought I was doing okay and didn't need their assistance. They essentially believed that I could function without them. They acknowledged that they most likely lived beyond their means, provided more to my elder siblings than was appropriate, and were never able to give me as much. They said that because they were paying for Jade's tuition, car, and apartment at the time, the timing of my wedding coincided with the worst of their excessive spending and lack of savings, and that they truly lacked the money to keep their word. They have made numerous financial and non-financial offers, including paying for trips, cars, and other items, but I don't think they fully understand yet. Not only do my spouse and I not want their money, but we also don't really know what the best course of action is in this situation. At least they are willing to make amends and have acknowledged that they were unfair. Easter was spent with my spouse, my grandparents, and Jade and her husband. My parents paid me a visit in the evening. For the time being, this appears to be the new normal. Commenter, I'm betting they'll seek you for financial assistance to cover funeral expenses. I don't want to accept any gifts from them at this time, partly because of this, op. I wouldn't feel bad about leaving them on their own as things are today, assuming nothing changed in our relationship between now and when they retire. But Jade and her husband would definitely make sure they didn't go without. Simply put, I don't think I would be able to tolerate being coerced into lending a hand. But I know they would try to use my mortgage as leverage if I let them pay it off. I've known them for too long to be unaware of their actions. I'm not wishing them any harm at the moment. Simply put, I wouldn't intervene to support them financially. They used to spend carelessly, and I believe they still do. I don't think my mom inherited any of my pop pop's thrift or sense of poverty. It is unlikely that she recalls the time when his business was just being started when she was a young child. Alternatively, if she does, she declines to learn anything from it. They don't seem to have much saved for retirement, and even if they had, I don't think they would live a thrifty lifestyle. After they retire, I fully expect them to be broke, and I don't want them to be able to use that as an excuse to try to guilt trip me into assisting. Even if they are, I am certain that Chuck and his family won't feel qualified to assist. Despite their enormous income, they always lament their lack of money. Their pals are trashy and their tastes are pricey, yet they are by no means impoverished. Furthermore, unless there are serious offenses, Lori will probably be so furious with them for being so narcissistic and listening to my complaints that she would be happy to see them suffer, especially if she doesn't think she will inherit anything. If her parents spent all of her wealth, I genuinely believe that she would throw away her own parents without a second thought. More about the gifts for Jade's birthday. The birthday issue with Jade was addressed in the comments section of the initial post, but I don't really have time to get into it. In summary, she and her spouse had been providing Lori with an annual sum of money, which turned out to be rather substantial, so that she could get tickets for my spouse and me to see the union play. She therefore thought that at least one of the games we played was the gift when we eventually shared images of ourselves playing them. She even cited a post I made on Instagram the previous year that specifically referred to it as a birthday present. I didn't say that it was my wife's gift to me. To be fair, looking back, Jade's reply at the time seemed to imply that she was happy that I was appreciating her present to me. In actuality, Lori was simply robbing Jade of a few hundred dollars annually for a minimum of five years. Jade and her spouse are really kind, I adore them. However, they lack a great deal of maturity. Both were spoilt and affluent as children, and neither had any practical understanding of price. They didn't bat an eye when Lori begged for money each year to buy me a birthday present because they honestly believed that tickets to a union game cost many times more than they actually do. Jade no longer communicates with either of my siblings, nor does her spouse. When they learned that I hadn't been receiving gifts from my siblings, they were both truly shocked. As an amusing aside, they spontaneously paid for everything when they took my wife and me to a game this spring. And they didn't think that made up for anything, they were just trying to be kind. 
I won't act like Jade is flawless or that you can't see how spoiled she has been. But she really tries hard, my god, not to be entitled. She and her spouse are financially secure on their own and freely share. It's unfair to belittle her because I acknowledge that she has an advantage. She has never rubbed it in my face and didn't ask for it. She is ashamed at how uneven things are, unlike Chuck and Lori. Chuck and Lori are upset that it's ending. Remarker, do your parents know that Lori has been robbing Jade? Yes, op. I am aware that they continue to communicate with both Chuck and his family as well as with hers. I don't want or expect my parents to ignore Lori and Chuck because they are the ones who have grandchildren. I have no desire to meddle in their relationship. My parents are aware of what Lori did, it is up to them how they choose to handle it. I'd want to concentrate on my own strained and minimally contact connection with my parents in the interim. I don't really see myself ever caring enough to try, and I don't really have a relationship with either of my elder siblings. They both know where to contact me if they have a moment of conversion and truly want to put things right. Op's final observation is that he doesn't want money from his parents. If I allow my parents to give me money, I'm not even sure if they have any, I think they will view us equally and fail to acknowledge the fact that I was treated differently even before I had the money. I have grounds to suspect that the money offer is not coming from a desperate attempt to purchase my forgiveness and win back my favor. I have no interest in it. Both my spouse and I have jobs and make nice salaries. Even though we are the poorest members of my family, Jade and her husband aside, we are at least comfortable and have savings and retirement funds, which may be more than can be said for the others. I've been okay with the fact that I don't see or talk to my parents as much as I used to. I'm extremely open to them trying to truly self-reflect and make amends, but only after they acknowledge the non-monetary bias. My grandparents understood it was distorted from the beginning and are totally caught up. To put it another way, I'm not too worried about calling the game, in part because I've been assured unequivocally that I will emerge from this stronger. I now realize that there's most likely no chance of saving my relationship with my older sister or brother. That's something I've come to terms with.